Powering Sustainable Future, the Star Charge and Zero Mission Partnership. I'm your host, Eduardo Espinal, Head of Sales and Partnerships at Zero Mission. Today, we're incredibly excited to dive into a partnership that truly embodies the spirit of innovation and sustainability in the rapidly evolving electric vehicle charging landscape. I'm absolutely thrilled to be joined by Jonathan Schofield, the sales director of Star Charge. Jonathan, thank you for being here. Eduardo, thanks for inviting me. Uh, I too am very excited about this partnership. Uh, you know, the, as you indicated, the, the market is rapidly evolving. And I would say one of the uh, segments of that market that's going to see some of the most rapid growth and changes is going to be fleet. Um, Eduardo, you and I have talked a little bit about fleet being a pretty broad term, and it touches a lot of different spaces within the uh, electrification. And so it's exciting to uh, talk a little bit about how your products, your solutions can fit with our solutions. And we created an ecosystem that really enables fleet managers to feel confident about electrifying their fleet. Awesome. Yeah, I absolutely agree with total, everything that you you mentioned there. You know, one of the things that I saw immediately after we spoke is the uh, how well established Star Charge, over 2 million EV charges deployed globally. And with our focus of integrating data services for zero emission transport systems, you know, tell me from the Star Charge perspective, what specific aspects of the zero emission mission values particularly resonating with you and were there key drivers in forming you know, this key uh, partnership? The EV charging industry has been around for over a decade, but it was very nascent for a while. And in the last um, you know, five years, we've seen it grow quite rapidly. And anytime you have rapid scaling like that, you're going to experience uh, growing pains. And a number of the pains that have been experienced have both been on the customer user end, as well as those who own and operate chargers. And being a manufacturer of EV charging equipment, we're very familiar with some of the challenges that arrive from having a, a, an asset base that's spread out geographically. Some of them may be near cities, but oftentimes they're on um, stretches of highway that aren't easy to get to. And because of some of the frustrations that both drivers have had, as well as those managers of the those assets, anything that we can do to help facilitate a greater understanding of that asset, how to leverage that asset. And I think one of the places where Zero Mission does this really well is how do you understand utilization and how do you plan for future growth? Infrastructure projects are expensive. Um, the industry has had the term future proof for a long time or future proofing. And it's a complicated term to try and execute on because you need to look at your capital expenditures uh, against what you can get for an ROI. And maybe it makes sense to add some additional power capacity now because you don't have to go through a utility permitting process in the future. That site might might not be great. And so with zero emission, uh, really the granular data that you guys are able to provide uh, to asset managers, it's really going to enable people to make more educated decisions about where they spend their money. And that is one of the reasons that I'm excited about this, because when asset managers are better informed and they make better decisions, they're going to be happier. And then it allows us to support them as they go out there and build out their infrastructure. Yeah, it's, it's so true. And I really see the shared commitment on both sides to uh, the zero emission future. Um, really, I think that's the, at, at the heart of this partnership. Um, and building on that, how do you envision this collaboration specifically enhancing Star Charge sustainability initiatives or environmental goals? So we have an ESG program, an environmental social uh, governance program, and there are components of that environmental side that we're aimed at achieving. Oftentimes, those are more of an internal thing. How do we perform internally? How do we improve efficiencies in our manufacturing process or our um, supply chain operations processes? With the data that you guys are, uh, that the Zero Mission is able to capture, it starts to change that dialogue where we could look and say, okay, how, how have we helped our customer base meet their goals? And that's one of the places that's exciting because 
as a, a sales director and how I'm helping both our sales managers as well as our channel partners go out and communicate the value of star charge, if we can educate them how these the, the process of electrification can improve their reporting, their verification, and how they perform for their ESG goals, it creates an opportunity for the whole community at large to start demonstrating this is um, these are real benefits that we're experiencing. Um, and there's and there's two phases to that, right? There's the the carbon emissions, which um, have to think of from the perspective of part of the emissions that come from a vehicle are easier to understand, whereas with an electric vehicle, you do have to look at what the source is that's providing that energy. And then there's the other component, which are the uh, localized tailpipe emissions. And I think as an industry, we're, we're getting better at understanding the, the global emissions from um, carbon and then you know, looking at that saying, well, if these vehicles are being charged from a renewable resource, it's better than having um, a compressed natural gas or, or coal. Localized tailpipe emissions, which is something that actually has much more um, salient benefits immediately. When you find yourself in a situation, and school, school buses are a very good example of this. Children are, are sitting there waiting on school buses, and if school buses are sitting in a contained area without a lot of ventilation, the air quality there is going to be uh, depleted. Whereas with electric school buses, you will see that immediately. Now, in terms of measuring and verifying that, that's a little bit more difficult. You really need to have sensors around in a localized area. I think over time, we're going to see that um, take place. And then we'll be able to, uh, to, to the market say, look, we're, we're benefiting on the global carbon emission reductions, but we're also improving localized air quality. Um, and ideally we'll be able to then sort of value that in some way, like there's a reduction in emergency room visits for asthma attacks. And that's something that could be measured and, and, you know, provides a significant value. Yeah, so true. You know, the ability to accurately track, record GH, you know, greenhouse gas emissions, you know, across your entire EV charging network, for example, and allowing us to deep di dive deeply into your ecosystem is going to be uh, a key component to provide that value to customers across the whole the whole uh, ecosystem. I mean, there there's a major focus on a, of course, from mine, from our perspective, on leveraging our predictive maintenance using AI, for example, like we can see that helping the reliability across your network. You know, that is just the tip of the tip of the iceberg, uh, as, as they say, you know, so talking about improved reliability and reduce and the reduced environmental impact are obviously clear wins. What are there other benefits that you see that this partnership brings to your customers and the community as a whole? Well, those are very large benefits, so I don't want to <laughs> diminish them. Uh, and, you know, I think that one of the, the reasons why I'm really excited about this after, you know, touring the dashboard that you have and some of the reports that you present is, is it's really going to empower uh, decision makers to feel confident. And part of the confidence comes from having data. Part of the confidence is taking that data and putting it in a report that you can go and stand in front of a, a board of directors or maybe in front of the school board. Um, that that ability to show impact is going to make a major difference in allowing people to move forward. And so how I see that having a community benefit is. One of the concerns we have in the industry is there are going to be communities le left behind. And, you know, those communities that have the financial resources are better positioned to both access um, certain incentives and rebates, but they're also in a better position to potentially make a mistake where they make an investment that doesn't pay off right away. For communities that are going to be going out and trying to capture an important incentive of a rebate, and it really needs to be a win for them. I feel like that's one of the places where having additional data can enable people to make those good decisions. Um, one of the the features that you talked a little bit about and Kevin talked about with 
with zero mission is your ability to ingest data. And it's not just data from electric vehicles. You can actually go and ingest data from the telematics that come from um, internal combustion engine vehicles. Right. And and that's one of the places where I really feel we uh, together we can provide greater confidence to those decision makers because you're not making as much of a forecast. You're actually taking ingesting data and saying, okay, we can, by strategically changing routes, by putting EVs in these particular um, patterns and, and ensuring charging is going on, you can ensure that you're not having frustration. Because what would be worse for somebody that is trying to be a, a change maker, they persuade people to buy an electric bus, and then the bus is unable to complete its routes. You know, that, that would look badly for... Um, that per that individual, that leader, as well as the 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 idea of e buses, right? And people who are not wanting this to happen could use that as an example of let's yeah. not get EV electric school buses, or let's not modify our fleet because X and X failed, and we don't want to fail like them. Ultimately, you know, we at our company as a mission together, we both believe this is that. The data that we're collecting and analyzing will inform for future deployments, will increase reliability. That means people are feel more confident when they go and charge. But that data will also give other stakeholders. And we believe that we can't do this by ourselves. And that's why to us is so crucial and so important to be with a, a partner like you. So excited. Thank you uh, for the uh, answer. I, one additional thing that I've been thinking mm -hmm. about is... Sure. You know, as a, a buyer myself, one of the things that makes me feel um, good about a purchase is that it had value. And it's even better when I ex extract more value than what I paid for it. And on the opposite side, there's nothing worse than overpaying for some features that you don't need and realizing, oh, you know, if I'd gone a different route. And I, and I really think that, again, you know, with EV charging, we've had a situation where People may have oversold customers on mm. high power charging needs. And as a result of that, there was an underutilization of that charging asset. So and true. as an industry, we really want to create trust and transparency. And so how can we better how, support the decision makers so that they're, they're investing in assets that are going to be utilized? And uh, again, it comes back to this idea of, capturing data, using data to drive those decisions and avoid making um, unnecessary purchases or, or capital improvements to over um, energize a, a project site. Yeah. And, you know, our ability to create a digital twin, as you mentioned, of, bring, of incumbent fuels uh, and analyze that data of what they have and then create that baseline is going to save them so much money on capital up front and in the future. Because now there's not just spitballing, right? And we saw a lot of that initially in the EV charging space. They got a grant and they went after uh, the charger. They went after, okay, whatever software. And then all of a sudden now they have stranded assets and not being utilized, as you mentioned. So uh, yeah, definitely agree that data is going to be, it is transformative in our ecosystem in general. And we have to, you know, again, create that data is going to be valuable, not just create noise. Um, so last last question, you know, looking ahead, in what ways do you believe that collaborating, partnering with Zero Mission will influence the future direction of Star Charge as a company? Well, that's a great question. And, you know... As an organization, one of the things that makes me feel really proud about Star Charge is our focus on research and development. And the some of the products that we're bringing to market right now really are um, designed to enable high power charging in, in a fleet environment and scale at the same time. Um, that's one of the places where I think it can be challenging for folks that are looking at larger fleets to be able to bite off a little bit and test the waters and slowly, slowly get in there. And 
with your uh, reliability and predictive capabilities, that is going to reinforce some of what we already believe and know about liability and how we need to come to the market. And some of what we do when we package up proposals for our customers is built around how we're going to support reliability from a traditional standpoint. When there's a problem, how quickly can we get on the phone? How quickly can we look at the mm. fault codes? How quickly can we get someone out there to cite if something does need to be changed? And if you can reduce that um, reliance on that older model, you know, that model is always going to be there. You're always going to need to have trucks that you roll to go out and fix problems. But if right. you can uh, modify that through better understanding of the the performance of the unit and using predictive analytics to identify, you know, we need to go out there and change these air filters um, and we need to do it quickly. So let's send somebody out now rather than waiting until there's actually an air pump failure or something like that. So I think that that, you know, reinforces the idea of like, how do we better use data to improve the performance reliability of our chargers? Yeah, and, and you're going to see, and we're seeing it already today, and I'm talking about the overall industry, how uh, it's become a very competitive landscape and companies have to get smarter on increasing margin, not just by reducing price, for example, or increasing pricing, for example. Um, so utilizing data analytics on a, on a, let's say on a, on a charter side and being able to build that library that will be start building for you, you know, of those error codes that are common across the network will definitely save money on sending a truck roll unnecessarily. You know, that to us is going to be valuable as we grow together. You know, I am so super grateful that I had met you. I met you at CES and we were able yeah. to speak and the light bulb turned on for both of us. So I really enjoyed uh, the insights you provided. Your, you know, this to me is a very important collaboration. I just look forward to, you know, our vision that we initially spoke about uh, uh, will be bigger next year, being like a, we'll have that growth stage. But I'm grateful for this, and I really thank you for joining us today on this uh, episode. Well, it's been a great pleasure to, to join you, and um, you know, like I said, I'm I'm really excited to. Uh, put this partnership to work. I'm excited to start having conversations with yes. some folks and, and you know, starting to work together to put together packages that make sense for um, these fleet managers as they, you know, tackle fleet electrification. So thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure. I'm excited about the new chapter. And thank you to you, our listeners, viewers, for joining us on Powering Sustainable Future, the Star Charge and Zero Emission Partnership. We'll be sure to keep you updated on the progress of this impactful collaboration. Thank you.